Hello, I'm Bob Weeks for Wichita Liberty TV, your weekly source for news, analysis, and commentary on Kansas and Wichita government and public affairs. Broadcast on Great Plains Television, that's channel 26.1, Sundays at 8.30 in the morning, repeated again at 4.30 in the afternoon. Also, you'll find Wichita Liberty TV on the internet at my site, that's the Voice for Liberty at wichitaliberty.org. You'll find all the uh, old episodes of Wichita Liberty TV there. You'll find show notes about today's episodes and all the past ones, and then all the other material that I and others produce almost every day. Uh, today, co-host Carl Peter John, just you and I here, and it's been a while since we've had a show with just us, and I just want to look at, look back a little bit because, like I just said, we have all the old episodes available at wichitaliberty.org on, through YouTube. Last week we had Speaker of the House, uh, Kansas House of Representatives. Before that, the Assistant Wichita City Manager and Director of Economic Development. Before that, our United States Congressman, Ron Estes. Uh, before that, Jonathan Williams, Chief uh, Economist at the American Legislative Exchange Council, or ALEC. Dave Cunningham of Flint Hills Group talked about computer security. Community organizer, John Todd, our friend. Uh, Kansas Representative Susan Humphreys, and before that, Kansas Representative Leo Delperdang. We had David Schneider of Citizens for self governance talking about the Convention of the States. James Franco, Kansas Policy Institute. Author and former Wichita Sherry Howard McMinn, she writes about her experiences with adoption and homeschooling, very interesting, living on the high plains of eastern Colorado. Radio talk show Andy Hoosier, Sedgwick County Commissioner Richard Ramsaw, Kansas Policy Institute President Dave Traubert, Denidri Herbert of the Sentinel before that, and then Kansas Senator Ty Masterson. So I just bring that up for the viewers because that's a lot of episodes there. I think a lot of them were very informative and uh, useful and they're all available at wichitaliberty.org. So anyway, Carl, let's turn to today. Uh, the Wichita economy and economic um, development efforts that we have. So I shared with you some charts and so forth. What is the state of economic uh, growth and development in Wichita and, and in Kansas more broadly? Do well, you think? I think that's been a real challenge because the focus on Kansas has been mainly at the state level. Mm -hmm. And local efforts, whether it was here in, say, Sedgwick County or Wichita or other parts of the state, have kind of gotten overlooked in the bigger media picture where everyone was focused on the experiment that occurred in 2012 when the uh, Brownback tax package was enacted. Mm -hmm. And of course, this year, the uh, big government advocates in the legislature, from both the Democrat and the Republican side, managed to override the governor's veto, change state policy, pass the biggest income tax increase in state history, and have taken us in a whole new direction that emulates uh, Bill Clinton's policy with a retroactive income tax increase that goes back to January 1 of this year. Mm -hmm. So it looks like uh, we've had some challenges, and now it sounds like we may be even making things worse for us. Well. As well, it depends on your perspective. Mm -hmm. I've been told that there is such a demand for government spending because of the services that are provided that this is going to be an attraction for business. And uh, the evidence for this, I think, is exceedingly weak. Uh, if you look at the states that have the highest tax structures, uh, they are generally the ones that have the lowest income and uh, wage growth. Mm -hmm. The states the nine states that don't tax income at the state level uh, seem to have much faster growth than, say, the nine income. states. Well, there's 41 states that have income taxes, but if you take the nine states within that 41 who have the highest rate income taxes, mm -hmm. states like uh, New York and California, uh, they're actually, at this point, losing more people. People are voting with their feet. Right. And a lot of them end up in states um, that uh, the nine states that don't, whether it's Florida, Texas, Texas Florida, Tennessee, places like that. Tennessee, uh, Wyoming, uh, mm -hmm. even interesting, some states that aren't thought of, uh, uh, South Dakota's one, mm -hmm. New Hampshire. Now, the states like New York, in particular, I'm thinking, are still very wealthy, but that's kind of a holdover legacy from their, when they were really the source of tremendous economic growth. And also, New York and California have a couple unique things. New York is the financial capital of the world. That's probably not going to go away. And then also, California has Silicon Valley, and those are tremendous concentrations of wealth. But aside from those, those states are really 
kind of starting to fade away a little bit. Well, the, you haven't seen the growth. If you look at the 2010 census numbers, uh, California didn't gain any congressional seats, uh, mm -hmm. and that was the first time that had ha had happened. Uh, th California had been gaining seats ever since uh, statehood. Mm -hmm. And if you look at uh, New York State, th they have been losing. And new, you're right about New York City being the financial capital, but you get outside of New York City, Bob, and it has been absolutely devastating in upstate New York in terms of uh, the what were once significant and major communities uh, like Rochester, Syracuse, Buffalo. Buffalo, yeah, those are really the kind of the heart of the Rust Belt. And you're right, Carl, congressional seats is a good way to kind of judge the relative growth of states because the number is fixed. So as they shift around between states, that lets you help, help understand where the population's going. And do you remember, uh, I think about 70 years ago, how many seats did Kansas have? We had eight at one time. But, you know, as recently as 1930, uh, we had eight congressional seats in and the state of Kansas. And who did you vote for in that election, Carl? Oh my goodness! <laughs> no, I'm just we should ask John. I, I, I was <laughs> asking. I was asking Thomas Jefferson to give me advice on that ballot, but uh, we'll now, have to save that for another point. Now we have four con con congressional districts in Kansas, and we could be possibly on the verge of losing another. Carl, let's take a moment off for a moment, and then let's talk about the city of Wichita specifically. Welcome back to Wichita Liberty TV. I'm Bob Weeks with co-host Carl Peter John talking about uh, economics in particular. I want to talk a bit about the Wichita economy, the Wichita area, the metropolitan area because we do have this focus on regional and that's kind of the way some of the statistics happen to be available, particularly employment. Um, numbers are more on a metro basis, not just the city of Wichita. And the, and the MSA for Wichita includes three other counties, mm -hmm. uh, Harvey, Butler, and Sumner counties. Yeah, and uh, you know, nowadays our government tells us the focus is on regionalism anyway, so uh, I guess that's that's good there. But you know, our unemployment rate has fallen quite a bit. I've got some statistics, we'll show them, but in January 2011, kind of uh, uh, still in the recession, our unemployment rate was 8.7 percent. Now, in May, it was 4.3 percent. So that sounds, it's cut, been cut in half the unemployment rate, but the unemployment rate is a ratio of two things. There's two numbers that go into making up that unemployment rate. The um, number of people in the labor force, those are people who are working plus people who want to and are actively working, and then the people who really have jobs. And if you look at our chart here that I think we're showing, we do see that the unemployment rate is falling, but the labor force has been falling in Wichita metropolitan area too, and by quite a bit. In other words, there are fewer people here who are either working and want to work. The number of jobs has increased just a little bit, but the labor force has fallen proportionally more, and that's the reason why our unemployment rate has fallen. Not that we've done a bang up job creating jobs, but we have fewer people who want to work in Wichita. Well, it's the dirty little secret about the unemployment rate statistic is it depends on people who are looking for work. Mm -hmm. And if people have said, gee, I can't find a job in my occupation and have stopped looking, they're not considered unemployed anymore. Mm -hmm. And so if you have labor force participation, and we're going through an important demographic change, Bob, because a lot of people, every day we each get a little bit older, and uh, uh, for a lot of folks, we're having, I believe, 10,000 baby boomers a day are reaching their full retirement age, at which point they can start taking Social Security. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously Wichita uh, only is a small fraction of that national total, but that is a factor that's occurring nationwide and having a big impact, I believe, on these statistics. And I've got another chart, um, uh, chart number two, Tom, that shows the growth of jobs in the United States, Kansas, and Wichita since the recession ended, which was around the beginning. It was in 2009, but this chart starts in uh, 2010. And these three lines are indexed, so we all start at the same point. We're showing relative changes. And the top line that's shooting upwards pretty rapidly is the United States as a whole. The middle line is Kansas, and you can see Kansas is growing slower than the nation, 
and Wichita, the bottom line, is growing even more slowly. So as time goes on, Wichita falls farther and farther behind the rate of job growth as the country. And it used to be that at uh, least the two recessions before this one, we lagged coming out a bit, but we did catch up to the nation in terms of job growth, but we're not doing it now. As a matter of fact, as time goes on, we're getting further and further behind. That's really troubling to me. Well, I think it's troubling on, at two levels, Bob, because we've got key Kansas industries that have been struggling the last few years, mm -hmm. and normally they're cyclical industries that go up and down, but agriculture, energy, and aircraft, mm -hmm. with the latter being particularly important here in Sedgwick County and Wichita, uh, they haven't been able to. They haven't been able to have that. Um, been able to the grow the jobs and rebound, and they've been suffering from just struggling economic conditions. Mm -hmm. this, the second factor, frankly, when you look at uh, the data that's out there, is normally that lag factor that you, s you provided, we would catch up, and that hasn't occurred. Yeah, I'm getting further and further behind. And agriculture, you know, we can't do a lot about that. Those prices for wheat and stuff are set on a global basis, but agriculture is only 5% of Kansas's gross domestic product, so it's an important industry, but manufacturing is much larger in Kansas. As a matter of fact, there's about six industries bigger than agriculture, but the yeah, the manufacturing, specifically the airplanes and aerospace-related things, big in Wichita, We've known for years that these industries are highly cyclical. We've heard for decades that we've got to start diversifying our way out of so much reliance on aircraft. But what do our economic development policies do? We focus on the big companies like Spirit Aero Systems. We give them, well, when Boeing left Wichita, our tax forgiveness to them had amounted to over $600 million over uh, some period of decades. And then a lot of the smaller companies in Wichita that we give subsidy to are in the aerospace industry too, as suppliers to Boeing or, sorry, no, I'm sorry, Spirit and Cessna and all these other companies. Well, one of the cho choices you have to make as a community is are you going to try to attract all the businesses in all areas and kind of let the marketplace decide where the best allocation of capital will be, which obviously will occur, occur privately, or will the government kind of direct and say, okay, Company A, you're part of the class we want to help, and Company B, well, you know, we appreciate you, but you know, benefits are going to go over here to A. And these incentives do have a cost, and that makes it more difficult for the other companies that have to compete for labor, for capital, for everything, uh, and to pay for the cost of government, too, that these uh, subsidized companies really aren't shouldering uh, their shares. So that makes it more difficult for entrepreneurial young companies to start up, and I think that's, that's a big problem. Carl, we're going to take another moment off, but when we come back, let's talk about downtown Wichita in particular and its record there. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Wichita Liberty TV. I'm Bob Weeks with Carl Peter John talking about uh, economic development in Kansas and specifically downtown Wichita. Now here's a chart of cumulative investment in downtown Wichita since it's since 2006, so a decade plus a, a year there, almost two years. And as you can see there, uh, the two bottom lines represent public investment and private investment, the top line representing the total. It's grown every year. And as a matter of fact, um, if I included the 2016 figures there, it would be over $1 billion of investment in downtown Wichita. And we're talking about zip code 67202 from Kellogg up to Central, the river to Washington. So it does include um, Old Town. So that's a lot of investment. But what's been the story of jobs and businesses? Well, here's another chart showing trends of business activity in the same zip code. This is data from the census. And I should say this is private sector employers only. So it does not include um, the, the school system and the Wichita City Hall. So you'd have to add a little bit to that. But Sedgwick can, County Courthouse is not in the zip code, It's too. across the street. So it's in zip code 03, 03, I think it is. Yeah. So 
the trend almost every year is down, both in terms of the number of jobs, the amount of payroll dollars spent and, or earned, and also the annual payroll. So we're really on a downhill track in downtown Wichita as far as business activity. And you can see now the downtown advocates are kind of starting to talk about it's more of a place for people to live now rather than to really work. And so they've shifted a bit. Well, th that's one of the trends that's been in place for quite a while because there have been a number of uh, residential developments mm -hmm. that have occurred in downtown Wichita. I think the most prominent was the transformation of the old Holiday Inn mm -hmm. Hotel into 250 West Douglas mm -hmm. and making apartments out of that building. And, and there's other residential uh, units that have built, mm -hmm. been built from an old town. I think of in a station, just the mm -hmm. one that comes to mind. And but so there's that's other a ones. good thing, but, but it's not the business driver that we were really sold on of all this stuff. Well, downtown, uh, the whole business environment has changed, Bob. And the fact that we're in a digital age and a computer age, uh, information age, I guess, probably might be a more accurate way to put it is driving uh, how businesses operate and how people live too. So you're in a situation where um, downtown is not the business center. It used to be a retail center. Douglas, mm -hmm. all along Douglas used right. to be retail, uh, retail stores and right business. and left I mean, and, it was and business. Yeah, the hub. And, and, and that, that is, then there's our still some there. We built the town east and the town west square big malls, but now those are really undergoing big shifts and kind of a, a downhill too. Well, a huge transformation. I mean, if you take a look at uh, uh, almost all the all the malls that have, had, had, have, are in this community, uh, it's a the Joseph Schumpeter, the famous Austrian economist, is talking about a cycle of creative destruction in terms of uh, old businesses being supplanted by new ones. Mm -hmm. And there's the other thing I'm concerned about about this is just the either the level of knowledge of our public officials or perhaps their mendacity. That means their ability to tell the truth. Because there was an, a request for quotation regarding Nafsker Park that says, since that time, and it's referring to uh, 2009, downtown Wichita has experienced record growth. Well, there's been a lot of investment, yes, but as far as business activity, plummeting so well in terms of jobs but the, here's the here's the thing as a former county commissioner that would jump out at me Bob did we see a proportional growth with all this private sector investment downtown did the tax base grow and, and here's the dirty little no. secret is is it did not and you know we've got some beautiful facilities the downtown branch Y mm -hmm. is the one that's most prominent in my mind but well, I was that's thinking the Interest Bank Arena. There's nearly two hundred well, million. That's a government project, fifth. right? I, I so that's about one fifth of that one billion dollars of investment, and, and it, right. of course, it does not pay property taxes. And and, and the YMCA would not mm -hmm. either. And there's uh, some other nonprofits or governmental agencies, but yeah, we should have expected to see some growth in assessed value of property, but it really hasn't shown up. And that's one of the concerns because if it doesn't show up there, you're not going to get the jobs and that you're not going to get the wage income. And that's going to be the harbingers in terms of whether you're going to be in a situation to continue the historic growth that Wichita and Sedgwick County have enjoyed. I would like I enjoy pointing out the fact that, for instance, the population of the city of Wichita today, Bob, is bigger than some major cities in this country. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Cleveland, I mentioned think we one. just passed. Uh, uh, and, and, and Wichita's population exceeds some of these, what have historically been, you know, considered much more, uh, much larger cities. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so, but on this, you know, seeing Wichita's ex downtown has experienced tremendous growth, it just isn't true. And so I wonder, do these people know this, or are they simply lying to us besides that? Well, I think this is one of the downsides of the so-called public-private partnership model, Bob, because under that model, uh, the accountability isn't clear. You know, if it doesn't work out right, who's going to bear the cost and, and the burdens? And if it does work out right, who gets the benefits? Yeah. And in the, the genius of the marketplace and the free market, free enterprise, economic freedom type system, that is clear that the people who in, make, take the risk, invest the money, uh, will earn the benefits. But if you get in a situation where that, those lines are not clearly demarked, 
marked out, uh, it's, it's, it becomes very problematical. Well, it's sad to see um, businesses take a loss and go out of business. I mean, that's a tragedy, but on the other hand, it's a signal that these resources were really not a uh, invested in a way that people really want them to, and government does not have such a stern uh, disciplinary force. They just uh, do what they want and to heck with whether it's successful or not. Carl, let's take our last break here and we'll be back in just a moment with more Wichita Liberty TV. Welcome back to this last segment of Wichita Liberty TV for today. I'm Bob Weeks and of course our co-host uh, Carl Peter John. So one of the things Carl will told about downtown is that uh, uh, we need to have a place that's appealing to young people, young professionals in particular, so that uh, these people will be attracted to Wichita. It's said that nowadays that people, young people, college graduates or whatever, they choose where they want to live and then they look for a job, which is kind of perhaps different than, uh, uh, than in the past there. And, you know, we went to underwent this big planning process in 2010. We hired a firm from Boston, Goody Clancy. They came to Wichita, and one presenter said, outside of Manhattan and Chicago, the traditional family household generally looks for single-family detached house with yard where they think their kids might play, but they never do. And then the principal of this Goody Clancy firm, David Dixon, he said that um, in the... In the future, Wichitans will be able to enjoy the kind of social and cultural richness that is found only at the core. Now, I think that this is a very elitist and condescending attitude. They're telling people like you and I who live in kind of suburban type of areas that we were stupid, you know. We're not rich, we don't have social and cultural richness because we live in the boondocks rather than right downtown. And this is just really, I think, a very condescending attitude. And on top of that, if I might say, um, there's been some recent research just hot off the press from Chapman University in Kansas that talks about young and middle-aged professionals who are almost uniformly said to prefer living in an edge, edgy, dense urban environment, in other words, Old Town and places like that. They actually opt for far more traditional or even banal alternatives. Professionals are more focused on family lifestyle issues when they consider where they want to live. Things like a lack of crowding and an affordable house. Well, lack of crowding and an affordable home, that's Wichita. Uh, absolutely. We have some of the shortest commute times in the country exactly. to be thrown in on top of that, Bob. Yeah. And I think Wichita is a wonderfully hidden resource. We've got some tremendous opportunities for folks. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, at the state level, I think we've created a tremendous amount of economic risk. Um, and with an uncertain tax climate, with a possibility of Obamacare expansion in the state with additional costs that are going to come from that and the inability to market this community successfully. We've, when I was a commissioner, I struggled with this mightily in terms of how, is, how much is the right amount of money to be able to spend and are we spending it effectively? And on I anything. Kept on like, anything. Yeah. And, and we, whether we're going to a trade show, which we've done, uh, focused primarily on aircraft, but not exclusively so, mm -hmm. um, to try and market Wichita, Sedgwick County, the, the whole South Central Kansas area. The real struggle going forward is, are we getting a appropriate bang for our bucks? And the state's involved in this too, because of course at the state level they're looking at trying to do projects, and we had the uh, I believe it's the Mars expansion up in uh, Topeka. Mm -hmm. There was a major event for them. And, and a tremendous amount of subsidy went into that, I believe. Absolutely. There was a tremendous amount, uh, and it was both local and uh, uh, support that went beyond the local side, Bob. And so we're in an environment now where um, everyone is trying to do this. Kansas, whatever tools Kansas has, um, other states can, have. Other them. states have or may even have more. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to look to states that have been able to get the growth and we've got to have some comfort with the growth, which I think generally we do, but there's some folks who say, hey, 
you know, do we really want to expand Kansas? And if we if we don't want to end up too much like a um, you know Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. Well, I don't think that would be all that bad. I mean, that area has, has had tremendous growth and. Uh, uh, I think a rising standard of living that we don't see here in the Wichita metropolitan area. And we struggle with this, Carl, because I don't believe these economic development incentives are necessary. I also think that properly measured, and it's just not me, they don't really work, but we're so focused on that. And as an office holder, as you were, Carl, do you want to be the guy who votes, casts a vote that sends Boeing to Texas instead of staying in Wichita? Well, the irony is, is that Locally, I can't think of a single vote that occurred at the city or county level or any other or at the state level here in Kansas to try and support Boeing um, during the entire time they were here. And of course, they still ended up deciding to leave and go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. My intent was to try and create an environment for all the businesses and see if we can grow. We have a tremendous history of entrepreneurship in the state, and we need to bring that back. And so, mm -hmm. whether it's the Coleman's of tomorrow or the Pizza Huts. Or Rena whoever, Center, Rena I mean, Center, Coke Industries. Of, yeah, I mean, these were all started up as ho small home-based businesses here, and uh, yeah. and that's the that's the creating recreating that environment because I think we've lost it and hasn't been there in place and it's not in place now and if we don't get it back uh, we're going to struggle in the future. And I think one of the interesting things is and I don't really know this but we do have this E2E this entrepreneur center incubator type of thing and we also see that at Wichita State University with the innovation campus. S these institutions are either governmental or almost governmental in nature and they seek to nurture entrepreneurs, but I just have a feeling that trying to manage entrepreneurs is not going to produce the results that we want to have. So well, I can't imagine a governmental body being able to manage Steve Jobs. Yeah, that's right. Or well, Bill Gates. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, they were rebels, of course, in their um, in their own way. So, Carl, that wraps it up for today. We're just out of town, out of time. I'm sorry. So maybe <laughs> out of town. I don't know if th things go like they have. So thanks again, to everybody, for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Wichita Liberty TV, and we'll be back again next week.